Reconciliation Week exists both as a celebration of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture and an attempt to foster resolution in reconciliation activities and discussion. Diversity has existed within Australia for a very long time. Within the Australian continent, over 300 different language groups existed, all with variations in culture. The earliest signs of interactions of people from other continents would have been between the 10th and 14th century, with a handful of small copper coins from the Kilwa Sultanate found in the Northern Territory's Wessel Islands. Most foreign interactions before the Botany Bay landing occurred in the Northern Territory with some trading between Aboriginals and Macassan traders for sea cucumbers being recorded as early as the 1500s and certainly at least from 1720. Post-colonial Aboriginal history is highly tumultuous. When Captain James Cook landed on Botany Bay in 1770 in order to avoid the British law that prevents the colonisation of already inhabited lands, he declared Australia terra nullius, an empty land. This made the lack of acknowledgement of Aboriginal people's existence the cause of many conflicts, with Aboriginal people often being referred to as subhuman. With the exception of South Australia, which decided to recognise Aboriginal people as British subjects as an attempt to avoid the same problems faced by the other colonies, Aboriginal people were defined under flora and fauna. Upon federation, this political dejection became uniform, with infamous acts like the Aborigines Act abetting and enabling the stolen generation to occur. Through the early 20th century, in spite of the participation in the First World War, Australian Aboriginals were barely acknowledged in Australia. The advocacy of William Cooper and his rocking moustache tried to grant Aboriginal representation in Parliament. In spite of participation in World War II, Aboriginal rights were not further recognised until a 1967 referendum gave a 90% affirmative to include Aboriginals in the census and for the government to make laws in their regard. In 1975, the same year that the Racial Discrimination Act was passed, the government established a Department of Aboriginal Affairs. In 1992, Paul Keating delivered the Redfern speech, acknowledging the suffering of Aboriginals that occurred from white settlement and the Stolen Generation. This speech has been often referred to as one of the best speeches in Australia, not only because of its acknowledgement of damages caused by colonisation, but also its immense eloquence and delivery. In 2008, Prime Minister Kevin Rudd made the formal apology for the Stolen Generation and initiated the Closing Gap Initiative. The theme of this year's Reconciliation Week is more than a word. This means that this year needs to focus on more than just talking. Discussion about improving outcomes, collaborating, closing gaps. This year is intended to unleash more than lip service, but actual, genuine change. Here's what the theme of Reconciliation means to others. What does Reconciliation mean to you? It's a time for all Australians to come together an opportunity to look at the history, um, learn from it, um, accept it, and ways to move forward. So it's a coming together. What is your favourite Aboriginal food? The foods depend on where you're from. If you're from ocean, it's possibly seafood. If you're from inland, it's possibly something from the inland. Um, most Aboriginal people tend to like kangaroo tail stew. Dale, how long have you been working in the Aboriginal community? For a long time. Been working at TAFE for nearly 30 years in in a similar role to what I'm doing now um, with you guys. Um, yeah, I can't remember. Long time. So what's the difference between an acknowledgement to country and a welcome to country? Good question. Um, an acknowledgement of country is something that anyone can give, so an Aboriginal person or a non-Aboriginal person. Normally somebody that's convening a meeting or a workshop or a teacher or a principal, etc. And it's normally acknowledging the the land that you're meeting on and the people whose land it is you're meeting on. Whereas in a welcome to country is um, only done by a traditional owner of that country, so an elder or somebody that has permission to give a welcome to country, which in traditional sense meant one group of Aboriginal people moving to another country and to do that they would need to get um, permission to do so and a welcome to country would be performed. Dale, can you share with us what the circle that we're sitting around um, means? Great question. I was wondering why we were sitting out here in the heat. The circle is basically a yarning circle, so it was installed last year um, with the view that students and staff could sit around and have a chat inquiry. So a yarning circle is something where people all get the opportunity to have a say 
um, one person at a time and everyone else listens to that person's point of view. So it sort of creates that, um, you know, that sort of we're all inkle type thing. So it's about having a bit of a chat. And then in the middle we've got the fire um, pit and fire is synonymous obviously with all cultures um, for things like warmth and protection and light and cooking and etc etc. So significant two things here are the yarning circle and the fire pit. <laughs> with the fire pit, it's, was it like to help represent how it, the elders used to do storytelling for the younger ge generations and that? Yeah, no, it, would, it is. Obviously, you know, fire is part of that sort of cultural significance um, of storytelling and, you know, sharing stories and that sort of stuff. So again, um, it has its ceremonial purposes. Different, co different communities or different cultural groups will have a different way of doing it. But it, there is a spiritual significance into it as well. And we've all sat around the campfire and looked into the fire and almost dreamed off into another, you know, another place and time. So it does have that, um, that spiritual significance as well. Dermot, what is your vision for Reconciliation Day? What would you like to see happen? Ideally, I'd like to see, you know, people all coming together. Um, I, I know I've already said that, but, you know, Reconciliation started 20 years ago with the bridge walk across, you know, Sydney Arbor Bridge where three, you know, 300,000 people walked across and you know there was a big push towards reconciliation at that stage you know in years after that things sort of quietened down and the authority sort of um, faded away a bit but 20 years on this is the 20th year of the official reconciliation I'd like to see more people coming together we still have the situation in Australia where Aboriginal people are driving reconciliation um, and I don't want the feeling that Aboriginal people have the view that they have to reconcile into into non-Aboriginal culture, the majority reconciling, sorry, the majority reconciling with, with the majority. It should be a two-way thing. So for you guys to be doing something like you're doing now, um, I'm really happy to be involved in because um, reconciliation is about everyone. <laughs>